Hi, I'm Drew Conry Mario from the Packet Pushers. Welcome to the Glueware live stream. And right now we're going to talk about a new feature on the Glueware platform. This is Network RPA or Robotic Process Automation. And this is used for no code process automation. I'm joined by Mike Howe. He is VP of Product Marketing at Glueware. Mike, what is the elevator pitch on Network RPA? Hey, Drew, great to be here today. We are really excited to introduce Network RPA to the Packet Pushers audience. We've been working on this one for a while. Uh, we did announce it and showcased it at Onug Spring in March and released it with uh, Glueware 4.3 in mid-May. So I just want to bring up this is a solution that is available now. Network RPA does enable the ability for any en engineer or operator to build end-to-end -end process automation without any coding skills. So they use it using a drag and drop interface. User builds out a workflow that is made up of native Glueware tasks from our existing app suite and external integrations to platforms like ITSMs, like ServiceNow or IPAMs or DNS uh, or security monitoring and many more. Okay, so pictures worth a thousand words. I believe you have a video to show us what it actually looks like. Can we run this video? And, and Mike, you're gonna uh, narrate it for us live as we go. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the application and a recorded video here. It is part of the integrated app suite. So you log into your Glueware Control instance. It's available from that left pane menu. You navigate into the workflow library. Here's where you view, execute, or create new workflows. So uh, when, you know, when you have your workflows there, you can create a new workflow. You just simply give it a name, a description, you can keep it private or you can enable it to be public and shared with our back type uh, levels. Then you're dropped into the, the workflow editor, the canvas, and you have your Glueware tasks, kind of the app functionality broken down. So you kind of take our purpose-built apps and then enable individual or unique capabilities from them. And you can drag and drop them into the canvas, resize as you need, tasks that need to be configured, you click into and, and configure them in that right-hand pane. Once they're configured, they go green. So the task is configured and ready to go. You then validate the workflow by saving it. We encourage uh, going through a test cycle to test the workflow. And then you execute the workflow. You can execute it in a test form or uh, promote it to production. When you're executing, you navigate to the workflow activity view. And here's where you can see detailed status and even click down into the device view. And because we're orchestrating on our native integrations, you see very, very detailed view. So let's take a little bit deeper view here. I do want to point out that, you know, we are taking a CI CD approach or enabling that approach where we're encouraging you to move from draft to test to production. And uh, when you go to run a workflow, you can schedule it, you can execute it, you can even API trigger it. So when you do go in and build it, again, we'll walk through this in a little bit more detail in that Here's where you can enable public or sharing it within your organization. And we have five different role-based access levels. So you may have read-only or troubleshooting workflows and then change workflows. This next demo, it speeded up a little bit, but what it's showcasing too is the ability to insert external integrations. So we've, we've integrated with StackStorm and we have Glue or native integrations. You can drag those in and then add in complex operators like if then else statements to take data, process it, and make a decision. So if I have drift, I can execute a, a, a remediation. And then diving a little bit deeper into the workflow activity view, you can search your workflows. You can see that real-time progress. Uh, on the right-hand side, it shows you each task you're going through. And as I mentioned, because Glueware is using our native vendor integrations on the southbound side, you get a very, very detailed view of what's happening. So you don't have to go to some other log or some other capability to see what's happening, especially when things go wrong. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, but the yeah. first takeaway I'm getting is by no code, you really mean no code. What does this mean if I'm a network engineer who's not comfortable with you know scripting and programming? Yeah, I was mentioning like we've been at this for a long time and that what we found is that, you know, quite a few years ago, everyone was advocating everyone become Python programmers and, you know, really kind of go down that coding path. Most engineers, a high percentage of them, uh, have not really been able to make that jump. So by providing no code, a no-code application suite, so when you look at our device manager, Drift and Audit, Config, config Modeling, and now Network RPA, they're all no-code apps to get you automating quickly. So really it's about you know, removing that barrier to create automation and, and then create automation that anyone can run, kind of democratizing what you've created. So if I build a workflow and share it, 
anyone in my organization or who has view of it can use it. So you mentioned integration, and that's essential if we're talking about workflow or processes. What can Network RPA talk to, particularly right out of the box? Yeah, let's break it down a little bit. So as most folks know uh, on this call, since hopefully they've been following us for a little while, we sit in the ONA layer, the automation orchestration layer. We speak southbound to the network infrastructure. So we have over 40 native vendor integrations across CLI, API, and cloud domains with our, our Terraform integration. But the, the more important part here, let's say a, a really important part for process automation is on the northbound side, kind of facing up towards the management plane. And so it's ITSMs and you know, uh, monitoring and other things, DNS that sit in that layer. So we've integrated with Stackstorm in this first release. And by, by wrapping Glueware around Stackstorm, an open source platform, it introduces over 150 API integrations that you get right out of the box with Network RPA. In addition, Glueware has our native API integrations. Currently, those are available in REST development kits uh, in Glueware Lab, and then you publish into Glueware Network RPA. And uh, looking forward to our next release, we'll be, we'll be introducing those native uh, packages pre-built that are Glueware provided, not kind of third-party enabled. Okay, so with that Stackstorm integration, it sounds like I'm getting, you mentioned ITSM, things like IPAM out of the box. Yeah, this was important to us because like even in the ONUG use cases, uh, I don't want to steal Tim's thunder, he's in the next one, but we wanted to have something that integrated with uh, external uh, security use case and called AWS and, and talked to Ansible. And so with Stackstorm, a couple of the real important capabilities right out of the box is you can automate Amazon Web Services, you can automate Ansible or essentially orchestrate Ansible. Mm -hmm. so this is a big one for our kind of Glueware uh, community that has like adopted Glueware, but still wants to make use of existing playbooks and other things. Now they can use Glueware Network RPA and insert playbooks where they need to. But this extends to things like Jira, opening up, uh, opening up issues in Jira if you're tracking or ServiceNow. We have quite a few users that have moved to ITSM processes where they need approval for a change. So in the in the automated process, we can wait for a ServiceNow approval on a ticket before proceeding and making, let's say, a configuration change. So Slack integration for messaging and quite a few more. So that's been really powerful in that there's pretty minimal setup needed to get those integrations working really quickly. Okay, so no code, I guess, gets me quick time to value, but what if I'm maybe a a little more of a sophisticated shop, does that limit my ability to customize if I'm bought into this no-code approach? Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's it's kind of the trade-off in that when you go no-code, you may limit the extensibility or customization that you have with the product. And where Glueware offers the best of both worlds is that we have Glueware Lab that we productized over two years ago. And that's kind of the, the low-code interface of Glueware or the kind of the back end where it's a full-blown IDE to build abstractions, build integrations, customizations. And Glueware Lab is fully integrated with our app suite as well as Network RPA. So if I do want to customize, create a custom abstraction, create a custom API interface to some custom database, right? Custom, custom, custom. Um, that's where you can go and build that in Glueware Lab and then publish it in. So it's been a nice uptick. We've seen, we've moved from like low single digit adoption of, of our customer base to well over 20, 30% of our customer base in increasing are starting to use lab to do the low code side and be self-enabled for that customization. Other customers like leveraging Glueware partners to do that work for them and help them build it. And you've heard from Advisix and SecureView in this session, and our, our partners are very well able to build custom integrations through Glueware Lab and help accelerate that when customers don't have the capacity internally. Okay, so one final question. Uh, the video you mentioned test and validation, it seems like you've built processes in to support you know, sanity checks or to integrate with a kind of a CICD or net DevOps approach to automation. Right. Yeah, and this is a, kind of two worlds coming together. As most people know in CICD or DevOps, it's continuous integration, continuous in, uh, deployment, and you have those automated via software. We want to take the same approach in networking. And so that introduces this term net DevOps. And so with Glueware Network RPA, it is designed so that you build, test, then you, you validate in a test phase, and then you promote it to production, and then you monitor, and then you iterate quickly. So 
We want to enable users to follow that kind of a best practice of a CI/CD approach and follow a pipeline to build and get an automation running and then iterate quickly and continue to add to their automation library. So you're kind of continuing to build out that self-service catalog of your move, add changes, your troubleshooting, your assessment. And uh, it's really powerful when you can do this in a no-code approach. All right, well, thank you, Mike, uh, for that overview. Uh, now, coming up next, we're gonna hear about using Network RPA for two specific use cases, compliance and security. You're gonna hear from Tim Silverline from Glueware and Ethan Banks from the Packet Pushers. That should be coming up in just about 20 seconds.